Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm weighing up the pros and cons of choosing between a scuba bottle or manual pump to keep your PCP topped up. But first, I'm out with the old hedge creeper, Rob Collins, for some farmyard pest control. I'm up with Rob Collins today, author of the Old Hedge Creeper series of books and chairman of the Pass It On Young Sports organisation, which has introduced hundreds of youngsters to, to field sports. Rob's also a professional pest controller and we're out on one of his farmyard permissions today. Conditions are looking quite good at the moment, a bit blustery, but we've seen a few birds about. What do you reckon to our chances, Rob? Well, on the drive here this morning, there was plenty of birds about in the air, on the ground. You know, we're in the trees all around the cattle yard and the big rookery at the top um, and they come down there in their droves so uh, you know, as long as you can shoot straight I think we might get a couple. Okay I'll do my best, let's give it a go. That's enough waiting around. I'm keen to see Rob in action so let's get on with it. The first port of call is the shed itself. There's nothing waiting inside for us but just around the corner we get the first sighting of our quarry. Oh he's gone. At first it looks like the rooks have scarpered, but Rob's got keen eyesight and he knows better. He's right through the bushes. We can't see it. Clip the bush on his head. There was a hole of about that big to shoot through. If only every day was like this. After just a few minutes of hunting, we've already had some action. Rob resumes his patrol, and just minutes later, he has another corvid in his sights. Sadly, this one's not to be. There's no time to dwell on that miss. This farm is overrun with flying pests, so we decide to double our shooting efforts. It's time for me to stop being a spectator and get involved too. Well, this looks like a promising spot, Rob. We've, um, we've seen birds swooping in onto the maize silage. And there's a decent looking city tree here. What do you reckon? Well, this has always been very productive in the past when I've shot with the young shots from here. So a uh, good spot is if you tuck yourself in around the back of there, you've got a good clear view of the tree and they don't see you. I'll hide in the back here and be your spotter in the, uh, in the slats. Good stuff, let's give it a go. Like those birds moving now. Yeah, let's, get, let's get in position. Before the vigil can begin, there's just one more task to take care of. Matt, it's uh, pretty bright here, mate. I think they're seeing our faces a little bit. Let's put the old uh, head nets on. Stop shining on the face a bit. A couple of have veered, haven't they? Suitably covered, I start to survey the scene. And even with a limited field of view, there's plenty to aim at. First up, I get a corvid in my sights. Reloading the Daystate Mark IV, I spot a pair of pigeons in a low tree. But the tangle of branches means the shot's not on. Rob's out of luck too, as his bird takes flight at precisely the wrong time. But there's still no shortage of quarry. We're sensing this could be a rather fruitful day. With a break in the shooting, it's time to tot up the scores and it's clearly been constant Corvid control so far.
well we've uh, we've had three or four corvids a couple of uh, dropped into the stream but it, that, that worked quite well we, we spotted a city tree that the birds were using obviously to uh, to skate the farm from so we set up in a shady barn put out a magpie decoy just to distract the birds away from us really so they were looking at the decoy rather than back towards where we were hiding what a small flurry of activity like I say we bagged a few but they're definitely getting suspicious of us now that they're, they're getting quite canny to us so uh, Rob said we'll have a bit of a bit of an explore around the farm and maybe find somewhere else to set up walking and stalking across the farm Rob takes point and almost immediately spots a woody in a perfect position. A magpie decoy set out on the hay bales convinced the incomer that the coast was clear. All that's needed now is a careful approach into shootable range. Proper job. The OS creeper does it again in a good wind, 35 yards, heart and lung shot right on the button with the Air Arms S410. And Rob's not done yet. You'd think with two shooters and a cameraman going about the place, the birds would be on edge. But this one seems truly oblivious. Pest control is a serious job and you can't turn down the easy ones, so Rob duly obliges. The dove picked up in the wind and looked as though it had flown on for a moment. Although we didn't see it drop, Rob was convinced it came down and, after a thorough search, locates the bird and confirms a clean kill. Pleased as punch with that shot. Blowing a hoolie. I knew he'd come down hard and the wind had carried him. We've got a nice collared dove to go with my pigeons and stuff for a nice mixed game stew tonight for my tea. The old edge creeper, real happy. Let's go and shoot some more. Meanwhile, I've intercepted a dove on a wire. It's a classic air gunning setup and the pellet hits the spot. But the retrieve proves a little more challenging than the shot. Luckily, Rob's on hand to offer some encouragement as I pick my way through the cattle. Basically, Matty shot the, uh, the collared dove and it's dropped in the cattle, and now he's uh, he's like twinkle toes at the moment, trying to ballet dance in with them. Go on, Matty, stop going like a big girl. I thought he was a farm boy. I don't want to spook them. Yeah, spook them, my bum. Look out, he's behind you. I've been <laughs> seeing what they've done to each other. <laughs> I could just imagine you slipping and going in it in a minute. <laughs> well, I've been watching them mounting each other. I don't fancy any of that. Oh, did you want to join in on the action? <laughs> <laughs> Um, basically we're here shooting the collared doves there's absolutely thousands of them in the other half of this barn is a grain barn and they're absolutely destroying us just not what they're eating but it's also what they're pooing over as well as everything else so there's a lot to do here so we've uh, got a, quite a lot of vermin to do on this farm so we're having a bit of fun as you can tell well the storm's blown in now and it's absolutely tipping down but we've managed to nip into this barn to uh, dodge the worst of the rain great thing about farmyard pest control is farms are brilliant at foul weather bolt holes. There's always somewhere you can nip in, shelter from the worst of it, but carry on with your shooting. Well, we've had a good day. We've moved around between a couple of farms to keep the action rolling, but uh, we've managed to bag a few. Wind's made life tricky. We've had to give windage for most of the shots. Targets have been bobbing around, but we've certainly shot a few. I missed a couple as well, much to, much to Rob's entertainment, but uh, all in all it's gone very well. One thing that's really impressed me today is the amount of songbirds we've seen. Now, as well as attracting a lot of vermin, these traditional farmyards provide food and great habitat for all kinds of songbirds. We've seen chaffinches, wrens, dunnocks and wagtails, which was really, really great to see. And uh, 
obviously taking out these corvids is going to protect their, uh, protect their nest sites when they start na nesting a bit later on. It's been a good day, hasn't it, Rob? It's been a good day. I mean, the farmer's really pleased with what we did over the uh, silage pits there because, like I said earlier, it's not just what they've been eating, it's what all these birds are pooing on. Yeah. And when a farmer has an inspection, especially for a little red tractor or something like mm -hmm. that, all these things need, need to be catered for. So we've done a really good job today. Yep. We've got a big thumbs up, and I know there's a big, nice slice of farmhouse cake and a big mug of tea waiting for us in the farmhouse. Brilliant. So, uh, you know, and uh, I'm not going hungry. You're not going hungry. Well, we've got a few for the pot here as well. Between the collared doves and the wood pigeon, we've um, we've definitely shot a few for the pot. Although the main purpose has been pest control. Yep. So uh, no, I we won't go hungry. No, and you can have the rooks. Well, that's fine. I can make rook pie. Good stuff. I just make my rooks look like pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it always makes a pleasant change to hunting company, even if the banter does sometimes spook the quarry. Now, it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. The Idleback shooting chair, which combines a comfy seat with a rock steady shooting rest, is now available at its lowest price ever. Buy direct from the Idleback factory and you can own the world famous rifle chair for as little as £270. Or get the fully tricked out Premier Combo for £356 plus £10 carriage. Apart from improving accuracy for hunting and plinking, the chair makes shooting accessible to people who may otherwise struggle to use an air gun unsupported and comes with a lifetime parts warranty. There are prizes aplenty to be won at the CLA Game Fair this weekend. Edgar Brothers has announced a prize draw worth more than £11,000 at its stand, including a Hatsan Galatian air rifle and Leica binoculars. To enter, just fill in a form at the Edgar Brothers stand, or download it from shootingsports.edgarbrothers.com. Air Arms has got in on the action too, on its stand, it's raffling away an S400 rifle. Get yourself to Blenheim Palace this weekend for all that and plenty more. There are around 2 million shooters in the UK, including 1.6 million air gunners. That's the outcome of the latest report on the value of shooting, which concluded that the shooting sports contribute £2 billion a year to the economy. Shooting also has huge environmental benefits, helping in the management of 2 million hectares and providing the equivalent of 16,000 full-time jobs in conservation work. Read the full report at shootingfacts.co.uk There's a new camo pattern from British clothing firm Jack Pike. The Wildlands pattern combines high-resolution images of reeds, leaves and grasses to form a realistic brown pattern. Ideal for air gunning on the stubbles or in dry grass and reeds. If it wasn't camouflage, we'd say it stands out from the market. And finally, details have emerged of a new air gun from Waltha that's set to take the market by storm. The Rotex R8 is heading into gun shops now. This new PCP runs an 8-shot magazine and gives up to 180 shots per charge. Its threaded half-inch UNF comes with a quick-fill adapter. And the best bit is that it costs just £420. We'll have a full review in Airgun Shooter magazine. That was the Airgun Show news. Scuba bottle or stirrup pump? It's a question that all shooters are faced with when moving on to their first pre-charged air gun. To be honest, there's no straight answer. Both have their pros and cons, and the best way to make a decision is to look at those pros and cons and decide which system suits your needs best. Starting with cost, scuba bottles are the most expensive option. Air capacity is important, and for a 12 litre, 300 bar scuba bottle, with gauge and hose, you're looking at spending in the vicinity of £250. Now, 
that's quite a hit on top of the air gun scope combo that you've set your heart on. From a full charge, this bottle will fill up a typical pre-charged air gun dozens of times, but it will eventually run empty and need refilling. A refill will cost between three and 10 pounds, but depending on where you take it. On top of that, scuba bottles also need hydrostatic testing every five years to ensure that they're still safe. I expect to spend between 30 and 45 pounds for testing. A stirrup pump is more affordable. Good quality model like this FX3 stage pump will set you back about 150 pounds and that includes a hose and gauge. After that outlay, it will give years of good service with minimal maintenance. Um, all you have to put in is the effort. Effort's a really important consideration. Filling from a stirrup pump can be quite a workout, but there are ways to make life easier for yourself. Firstly, try to keep your back straight and use the weight of your body to bear down on the pump. Also, use the full length of the pump for maximum efficiency. Also a good move to go for frequent top-up charges rather than trying to fill completely from empty. If you use an FAC rated air gun or any gun with a large capacity buddy bottle, you're gonna have your work cut out when you're guzzling through air, constantly refilling with a stirrup pump and it's probably not the way to go for you. Filling with a scuba bottle is much easier. It's simply a question of connecting the hose, gentle twist of the knob, filling up slowly with air. Once you reach the required pressure, tighten back up again, release the bleed valve, bleed off the air, disconnect, you filled up, you're ready to go. You're not gonna work up much of a sweat going through that process. Scuba bottles do require a lot more effort when it comes to transportation. A large capacity steel bottle is very heavy and they're devils to lug around. You also need to ensure that they're securely fastened if you intend to transport them in the boot of your car. Stirrup pumps like this FX are relatively light and compact, very easy to carry around and very convenient for popping in the boot of the car. Stirrup pumps are also a lot more convenient because they're always ready for action, as long as you are. Scuba bottles have an annoying habit of running out of air when you really don't want them to. You're then at the mercy of the opening times of a scuba centre or a dive shop with a compressor so you can get a refill. Um, it can also be a heck of a trek if you don't live close to anywhere that does bottle filling. You'll often hear air gun shooters talking about the importance of clean, dry air. Dust and grit can be ruinous to the internals of your air gun. If you're using a stirrup pump out of doors for a fill up, it's a wise move to put a jacket down first onto the ground so you know it's on a clean surface and not drawing dust and grit inside. Moisture brings the added risk of corrosion, can also damage the internals of your air gun and can also render them dangerous. The breathing quality air inside a scuba bottle contains very little moisture, so the risk of corrosion and the consequent damage to the inside of your air gun's air reservoir is greatly reduced. Stirrup pumps will always draw in a degree of moisture from the atmosphere while you're pumping. Uh, quality models like this FX feature filters and moisture traps that reduce that considerably, but they'll never run as dry as a scuba bottle. Uh, unless that is, you go for a Hills pump and pay extra for their dry pack system. So, given the rundown on the pros and cons of scuba bottle versus stirrup pump, the decision really does hinge on what you want to get from the system combined with your budget and your access to bottle filling services. What I would say is, whichever system you opt for, never be tempted to fill your air gun beyond the manufacturer's recommended working pressure. It's almost certain to damage your air rifle and could be incredibly dangerous. Well, that's it for this episode but we'll be back in two weeks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.